Alright guys, I'm gonna do a list. And this list is... Normally I talk about great, incredible movies that you absolutely need to see. But this, this particular list is the are the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. And it's a good probably 15, 20 movies long. This is probably gonna be a pretty long video. But... We'll see. Let's just... I'm gonna work down the list and... I'm going to tell you why these movies suck. Okay, first of all, Mission Impossible 3. I, I thought, I think my, probably the main reason I hated this movie is because I didn't see MI1 or MI2. And MI2 ended up on Bad MV Beatdown, so, uh, that's it. make it that what you will. And, uh, but this movie was terrible. It should have stood on its own merit, and it didn't even do that. It just... Th I just could not care about anything that was going on. And there's a scene early on in the movie where uh, this person dies and they make this giant deal about her death. There's this huge, incredibly incre montage about how much about her funeral and everything, how much of an impact she had in Ethan Hunt's life. And this is literally the first time we ever see this person is her death scene. So that is a fail in filmmaking. You introduce a person first, like kill off someone important. Don't just introduce someone for the sake of killing them off for no real reason. There are only two good things about this movie. There was a bridge scene, which was amazing, and a great action scene. And Philip Seymour Hoffman is a villain. I mean, he he's he's worth the price of admission. He is an incredible villain. And he had this really there's this really chilling scene where Hunt is interrogating him, and he says one of the coolest bad guy lines ever. I won't spoil it for you now, but unfortunately, you have to see a really bad movie to get one of the coolest bad guys ever. And this one, oh god, I'm gonna get so much hate mail for putting this movie on the list. But, I don't care, this was a horrible, I hated this movie so much. It's I Am Legend. I could not, I just could not stand this movie. I mean, <clears throat> I had to choose between seeing this movie or Enchanted. And I wanted to see I Am Legend, and I was just... It's like House of Night. Nothing good ever happens. It's just soul crushing. It's so miserable. And when I finally did see Enchanted, I'm like, I could have saw this, a movie that is literally all about happy endings. So, it's just, it's just, uh, it's just a thoroughly soulless, heartless movie. And it's just, it showcases how cruel people are. And I just, I could not stand it. I hate this movie so much. I just, every time someone, I, I'm shocked to see how many people like it. It's just, I hate, 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 hate this movie. And Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Oh my god, this was a terrible film. I, I, this is another movie that's gotten really good views. And uh, I, I couldn't watch it. It was just, nothing about it was funny at all nothing like I laugh like twice and it's just there are some scenes that make you just make you want to throw up and I mean that literally in many senses of the word you'll you, if you've seen the movie you know what I mean but it just for a comedy it just was not funny it was just so bland and lifeless and Bride Wars Bride Wars was a terrible movie this was this was one of those movies that kind of had promise, but if you, a couple of these movies have been on Bad Movie Beatdown, so just go see the Bad Movie Beatdown of that, and like Christmas with the Cranks, this is also on Bad Movie Beatdown. Uh, this was just the biggest problem with this movie was its ending. It had like five different endings, and like MI3, there were all elements that were brought into the movie at the absolute last minute. It's like they took the endings of ten different Christmas movies and shoved them into one movie. And my sister loves this movie. She just loves it. And she went so far to t tell me that everyone on the planet liked this movie except for me. And tell me in the comments if that's true or not. If you hated Christmas with the Cranks, say so. Cause, and then I'm going to show it to her, because... My God. And Mamma Mia, the ABBA movie. This movie... It was just an excuse for music. That's all it was. It's like a big, giant ABBA love letter. And I have nothing against ABBA. I like ABBA. They have great songs. 
but that's all this movie was. And most of the songs I'd heard before, so I was basically paying for a CD that I already owned. And it's just... It's like, it was just song after song after song after song, and no plot. There was little to no plot in this movie. It was all music. So if you're looking for just ABBA, 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 see this movie. If you're looking for a good musical, I have to go with High School Musical. High School Musical had a, at least had a story. Night at the Museum 2. The problem with this sequel was that it's, it was just a rehash. Of the, it was like a shot-by-shot -shot remake of the first movie. They literally copied the exact same joke with from... From the, from the first movie, they like literally honestly stole jokes from the predecessor. It was like just, you were literally paying to see Night at the Museum 1 over again. It's like the same thing, only bigger, not better. And uh, Cirque de Freak, I already reviewed this movie. I'm not going to go into it too much, just see my review of it. Same thing for with New Moon. Just see New Moon, new, my New Moon review. It has, New Moon has so many problems with it. I, this video would be two hours long if I were just to, just to talk about New Moon. And speaking of vampires, I should probably mention vampires suck. Uh, probably a lot of you are going to wonder what I thought of that. I had to see this movie against my will. And, uh, because my sister wanted to see it. Just, I warned her, look, this movie, this, it's a scam, it's a ripoff, this movie only exists to steal your money. And she didn't listen to me, and she made me watch it. There were like, the there were like two funny jokes. One of them is, what I'll give you the funniest jokes in the movie. One of them is a scene you've seen it in the trailer where they rip off Scary Movie Two. A guy hits him with a baseball bat. He knocks the guy's head off. The head goes flying into the air. There are these two guys sitting by the car having beer, and the head goes into the window. And the guy looks at the head and goes, "Kardashians." That was funny. And another scene, she's. The fake Bella is driving her truck to school, and there's a parking sign in one of the parking spots that said, This is reserved for angsty teen with crappy truck. That was good. But aside from that, the movie was just. There are scenes that honestly made me want to vomit. They were just. Un, like Nick and Nora, they're just unnecessarily gross. And uh, The Invisible. I had really high hopes for this movie, but it didn't deliver for the sole purpose that the characters in this movie. Forget the fact that they're bad actors. I mean, the girl, Annie, was a good actor. But the guy, he's the same guy from uh, one of the other movies on this list. He was in, like, War of the Worlds and something else. He was in something else, but I'll get back to that. <clears throat> he just was a horrible, horrible actor. And the problem is that these characters, these are main characters, and they're not likable at all. One of these characters is like a... It's like a bully, and she, like, attacks people and cuts them and steals things. She's, a cr like, a teenage criminal. And this one kid contemplates, is, like, almost trying to kill himself all the time. And, uh, the problem is, it, it's, it's called The Invisible. It's about, like, a kid trapped in limbo, and there's little to zero focus on that. It's just all about this other girl. And that's the biggest problem. The one good thing I can say about this movie is its soundtrack. The soundtrack was amazing to this movie. I bought it off iTunes. It had, I, and I used most of the songs from it for my Shiver Linga playlist. But it had some incredible songs. If you can find the soundtrack of this movie, definitely buy it. Uh, this one I just watched recently. It was The Cave. And this is another one I had high hopes for. It looked, it looked really cool. But the biggest problem with this movie is that I just did not care. I just did not give a crap at all. The characters were so underdeveloped and so all over the map that when they died, I did not care. There's one scene where a character dies, and you don't even know how they die. It's just, the person's alive in one scene, cut to their corpse. What the hell? And I know it's PG-13, but that's no excuse. I mean, look at look at Alien vs. Predator. That movie is PG-13. That had plenty of gore. But Cave, I just did not care. The monsters were kind of cool, that, but and the when they threw the big twist at you at the end, I was just like, "Ooh, so what? I don't care. Let this movie be over." And this, this, I reviewed this already. This is a one movie I honestly considered walking out of the theater, and I never ever do that. 
It was the re Tim Burton version of Alice in Wonderland. Oh my god. I was just sitting to the movie like, wow. I so desperately want this movie to be over. I, I just... It was so... I was debating whether or not I should leave. Because it was just... It was just too weird for its own good. I was like... I was like, wow, this hurts my eyes. This hurts my brain. This is just too much. Too much weird. Too weird. I'll, these two I'll get back to. I want to save these for the end. Because the, there are three movies I want to save to the end. So I can talk about them. Well, uh, 17 again. The one with Zac Efron. That, that's, that one was just... That movie was just for a comedy... Like, the first half of the movie was just so miserable. It was so depressing. It's all about these horrible things that happen to these people. And it's just like, is this seriously supposed to be a comedy? Because I'm not laughing. I'm just feeling sad. And uh, the premise of this movie is incredibly flawed. The whole reason Zac Efron's character wants to go back and do it all over again is so... Uh, so he, he regrets giving up a high life of fame and fortune to live a happy life with his girlfriend. When anyone with their soul would be the other way around. They would regret, if they like, got rich and famous but gave up their girlfriend for it, they'd regret that. And that's what the movie should have been. When you're coming up with better plot than the movie has to begin with, something is wrong. And there are three superhero movies I, didn't, I could not stand. Iron Man 2, which I already reviewed, it's just... I said it wasn't a total loss. I think I think I kind of have to take that back. There were, like, the racetrack scene was cool. And Mickey Rourke was cool. But it's just... Tony Stark was just such a thoroughly unlikable guy in this movie. He was cool, but still kind of a jerk in the first movie. And the first movie, he had a soul. In this movie, he does not. He's just doing whatever he wants just for the hell of it. And then Hellboy 2. I love the first Hellboy. I think it's one of the coolest uh, super original superhero movies out there. And this one, they just pussied him up. I mean, man, what did they do to you, Hellboy? I mean, it's just it's just so domesticated and, like, making jokes and wisecracks. And, like, it's just... I, I expected wah-wah music after half the stuff in the movie. Because... It had one or two cool monsters, like the big plant monster that attacks him in the city was cool, as being the sci-fi buff that I am. And, uh, The Incredible Hulk, the one with Edward Norton. Edward Norton is a terrible, terrible Bruce Banner. I actually liked Ang Lee's Hulk, so that's probably why I'm defending, I'm bashing this one. Ang Lee's Hulk, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it takes repeat viewings to appreciate, is the deal. <coughs> But The Incredible Hulk, it was like just, it was trying to be just a pure fun action movie to make up for Ang Lee's Hulk, but it, Edward Norton is just the worst possible guy for the Hulk. He's just, he's not, Bruce Banner is supposed to be, excuse me, Bruce Banner is supposed to be like a tortured guy. He's like, he's like, he has deep and complex, and Edward Norton is just like, kind of, trying to soften him up, and make him just accessible for anyone, and that's not how Bruce Banner should be. And, uh, the three movies I really, truly hated with all my heart, one of them was The Breakup, with Jennifer Aniston and Vince Vaughn. Oh my god, I could go on for hours about how bad this movie is. I mean, it's talking. The entire movie is talking. There's like, there's no s musical score throughout the entire movie. It's just bland and flat and talking. And they're, like Vampire Suck, there are two good jokes. One of them is at the very beginning of the movie. So you think, oh, maybe this won't be so bad. And one of them is at the very end of the movie. Which is right when I was, when I, me and my mom, we were watching this. My mom turned to me in the middle of the movie and said, do you want to just take it out? It's not very good. And that's a bad sign already. And then the movie sprang out this one really funny joke delivered to us by the guy who directed Iron Man, no less. He was in this movie, and I'm like, how the mighty have sunken? Fair enough, this movie came out before Iron Man, but still. And, uh, it's just the last joke of the mo good joke of the movie. It's like, they're to give you false hope. Like, Okay, this joke was good. Let's stick around. See if they gave us any more jokes. It's and there's no nothing. 
It's just, it's the most boring movie I've ever seen in my life. I was about to fall asleep. And it's just, it's insulting, that last joke. It's like, it's trying to get you to keep watching this movie. And this is another movie that gets very good reviews. And I cannot, for the life of me, see why. Like, I've read great review after great review of this movie, and I'm like, are you kidding me? This is worse. So boring. It's bland. It's it's nothing. The movie is nothing. And, uh, oh my god, War of the Worlds, the 2005 version that I was talking about. It's the same kid from The Invisible in this movie. He was actually a good actor in War of the Worlds. I don't know what went wrong for The Invisible. <laughs> But this is the one movie that I chose to stop watching. I just... It was like I Am Legend. It was just gratuitous death and murder and bleak and hopelessness. It was so gratuitous. I was just like, wow, this is miserable. I don't want to keep watching this. That's it. I'm done. I took it out. I took it out at the fairy scene. Like where the the robot comes out of the water and attacks the boat, that's when I stopped. That's when I'm like, you know what, movie? You've gone too far. You're, you've are you just been nothing but killing and misery, and I'm done with you. And quite possibly, I think this and The Breakup are probably tied for the worst movie I've ever seen. Skinwalkers. I'm going to say that again. Skinwalkers. And... I just, this is a, I rented this solely because Stan Winston produced it. The late, great Stan Winston. And I don't blame him for this movie. I don't. I really don't. It's just that it's everything on how to do a horror movie wrong. And it's just, they claim that the movie is rated R and it got cut down to a PG-13. And when you watch the movie, the, every single death in the movie is a gunshot. Like, they just get shot, there's no bullet hole whatsoever, and they drop dead. So, there is no chance in hell this movie was ever rated R. There is no chance whatsoever. They're just saying that to appease us. And there were, like, every character in the movie was there just to die. There's a scene where they have, like, this big barbecue, and all the characters are there. And, like, they, they say one word, that's it. They, this one character literally shows up, says one word, leaves. Next scene, they show up, and they get killed. Say one, they show up, say one word, and die. And there's even a black guy who's second to die. While he didn't die first, which I gotta give the movie that, it's just... The black guy didn't even have a name. It was just black guy. There were so many characters that didn't even have names. And when people died, I just did not care. Like the cave, I just... But even worse. Actually, no... The cave might be worse. The cave at least gave their characters names. This movie didn't even try. There was no characterization whatsoever. It is the worst horror movie I've ever, quite possibly ever. It's just so horrifically bad. And but this, this is my response to all these bad movies. They suck. And there are some movies I can't really talk about, like Sherlock Holmes, I actually, I don't really count that because I was about to fall asleep when I was watching that movie, so I, I was, it was between going to bed or finishing the movie and I wanted to go to bed. And there are some movies I just see the trailers for, and the tr like Letters to Juliet, the trailer for that movie literally hurt. Like, every time that trailer popped up in the movie theater, I would just, like, groan. I was like, not this again. This is the, w the trailer physically hurt. And then there's the unspeakable film. I, I, I can't even... I can't even spell it. I'm not even gonna... I'm not even gonna tell you what it is. It's just... I haven't even seen it. I'm never going to see it. I avoid it like the plague. I shiver, like, shudder whenever I see it in, like, blockbusters or something. I, I'm ashamed to be in the same room with it, and I haven't even seen the darn thing. Just imagine that. I'm not going to tell you what it is, because I'm ashamed to say the title of it. But 
Those are the worst movies I've ever seen. Tell me what the worst movies you've ever seen were. And tell me if you agree with my list or not. Friends of 27 is